Welcome back to Black News Tonight. CBS's hit sitcom series, The Neighborhood, just premiered its fourth season. And my next guest's character on the show has a huge crush this season. Let's take a look. Uh, isn't that just like the barbershop? All right, well, Marcel Spears portrays Marty, an aerospace engineer and a younger nerdy son of his. So welcome to the show, Marcel. <laughs> What's up, Shannon? All right, I'm liking the flavor. You got the hat, you got the pins, you got the jackets. Okay, I'm doing. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. That's your style. Okay. This is more Marcel, okay, less of Marty, up. right? A hundred percent. Okay, so one hundred percent. So tell us a little bit more about Marty and how you guys differ in this character. Um, I think it, it's it's been interesting playing Marty for four years. It's honestly it's been a, a pleasure, but. To, to sort of step outside of the the person that I think I am and the cool that I think I possess, which um, probably uh, there's a lot more Marty in me than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> but uh, Marty Marty being a little bit of a mama's boy, I feel like we have that in common. It's something that I, I definitely feel like I gifted him on the show. Like a lot of a lot of the things or a lot of the the quirks that Marty have are are things that Marcel um, probably has definitely inside him but usually it sort of sort of keeps it on the low if you feel what i'm saying right 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 and i have to pay tribute to that wall behind you i'm loving all the people in the legendary icons behind you is this something that you put together and why is this important to you because it seems like in in line with what also happens on the show no this is this is 100 percent me this is um a friend of mine madam muse is a, a just a really really talented artist and i was a fan of hers before she was the homie, uh, so I, I collected a bunch of her prints. This is the the wall of uncles. Uh, she did a, a black a Black History Month series uh, maybe a year ago, a year or two ago, and um, painted just like these really really pivotal figures in in the black community across the diaspora. And I just started collecting, and so I put them I put them up on the wall. Uh, and, and these is the uncles. Wow, I love that. And I also love that same flavor that you guys bring to the show. So I want to show another short clip right here. And then I want to ask you a question about it on the other side. Take a look. So yes, the show is a lot of fun. It's funny and enjoyable. But you also deal with a lot of topics that we're seeing be relevant in today's society. So how does the show strike a balance between keeping it really funny, but also engaging on social issues such as racism and gentrification? I mean, I, I feel like these are issues that affect uh, a large portion of, of this country, especially people that look like us, people that people that look like me. So when you put um, black people in front of the camera and, and this is a show that is kind of like a slice of life show, uh, issues like racism and, and gentrification and, and redlining and, and certain political issues that affect black and brown communities are things that is easy to talk about in our show because we have a cast and a crew and a, and a creative team that is willing to talk about those things. And we have people in the writer's room and behind the scenes who are, are well versed in those things and, and have a perspective and, and wanna see these things talked about in homes across America. So how do you feel about some of the comparisons that people make about it being the, the new age all in the family, Archie Bunker? <laughs> I think I think that was the original, like that was sort of the idea. Cedric's character uh, is is very Archie Bunker like. He's sort of like sort of picked up out of time, and and he's a little crotchety, and he's a little stuck in his ways, and he's a little stubborn. Um, and so it gives us one. It's it's real. Like everybody has that uncle who, who like he says things that that aren't necessarily PC. He's a little bit behind, and um, those those opinions sort of parallel to somebody like Marty, who is a millennial, more progressive thinking, a little more liberal leaning. Uh, and and the guy who plays my brother, Sheon McKinney, playing Malcolm, who is sort of a little more revolutionary in his thinking. Um, those ideas get to sit next to each other in one show. And it, it gives us a chance to really have a have an open discussion about all of all of these topics. Mm, I love when you guys have them and especially you get to have these discussion with none other than Tashina Arnold and Cedric the Entertainer. How is it Man. working with these icons? I, I it's, it's so it's crazy because again, we're going into season four like I still am not used to it. I'm still, still pinching I'm still yourself. Where, like, <laughs> yes, man. Yes, 100 percent. I'm still right. pinching myself. Like I, I wake up every day. I go to work and Cedric will be like, Yo, what's up, Marcel? And I'm just like, this is the Cedric the Entertainer. I'm working with the Tashina Arnold. Like these are people that I grew up watching. These are people that I have an immense amount of respect for. And it's one of those special things to where like you, you sort of 
you have this idea of who this person is in your mind, and then you meet them in person, and sometimes they don't live up to that. Mm-hmm. But Cedric and Tashina have far exceeded whatever my expectations are. They are consummate professionals. They are about their business. Mm. They are generous with their talent, with their time. Like I consider them both friends and mentors. Like it's it's been a it's been a crazy experience. I'm not used to it. Like my parents are finally proud of me. At first, you know, you go to artists route and they just like, man, what is this gonna be? But but now they see me next to Sad and Tashina, they're like, all right, that boy they made it. So right. It's, now they're telling everybody, you gotta watch my boy, watch my boy. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the dynamics and the energy like on set? Like when you're filming, are you guys ad libbing the whole time and then when you cut, are y'all still cutting up off camera or what? Man, listen, it is it, again, people don't realize like when you're making a TV show it's it's really about putting these different artists together as collaborators and and hoping that mm-hmm. that sort of that mix that sort of concoction of, of people can can create something really great and really beautiful and i have been in, extremely lucky in that everybody in this cast is super cool like you there are no attitudes there are no egos everybody's there willing to work everybody's there willing to learn we can have long days on set and still keep each other cracking up i feel like for me my goal is to get Cedric to laugh. My goal is to get Tashina to laugh. Like if I can get these people who are just very talented comedy actors, very talented comedians who don't laugh. Like Cedric does not laugh at jokes on set. <laughs> there, there will be stuff written in the scene and he is deadpan. So if I can get him to break, I feel like I've succeeded. I feel like that gives me an opportunity to like give, give myself a little pat on the back. Um, and I feel like the, mm. the whole cast sort of picks up that mantle and, and that challenge. Well, I feel like you bring your own power to hold your own on set because you have a lot of experience on stage as well as television. But how has that stage experience helped you transition more into television, especially with a multi-camera project like The Neighborhood? Well, I think my theater background is like one of one of my secret weapons. Like multi-cam TV shows is, is kind of like live theater. Like we, it, especially before COVID, we had a live audience. Um, and so you kind of like in theater, you only get one shot to do it. Like you do it, it's live. The people are right there. You got to be on um, and you feel that energy. You got to know your lines. It's not as many stop and goes because you have four different cameras trying to pick up a whole bunch of different things. So you got to be on your mark because if you're off of this camera, you'll be off of that camera and that one, and that one and the other one. Uh, and so that's a little bit different than single camera. And it's a lot like theater in that way that that sort of live audience feel has sort of uh, made me very, very specially equipped to to do this show successfully. Well, I have to ask you before we let you go, a question for our younger viewers. A lot of them want to be actors. Everyone wants to get into the entertainment business. And you actually have a Master of Fine Arts in acting from none other than Columbia University. So how helpful was that for you? And what do you recommend for our young uh, viewers who want to get into the industry? I mean, I, I would I would recommend following your passion. I recommend doing your research. Um, I did go to Columbia, which I, I was grateful for that opportunity. Like, it, it's really tough to get into that, that program and, and get my master's. But I think it started with me going to my HBCU, Prairie View A&M University, where that seed was planted and sort of nurtured. It gave me the opportunity to have a point of view and a perspective as an artist that I feel like a lot of young people who are talented and passionate, they don't really know like where they want to go, or what they want to do, and the only way to find that is to just do it. It's to really just follow that passion wholeheartedly, and um, and and really take the the bumps and bruises, and and take those those L's, which are not losses but lessons. Those are the kind of things that shape you and and reaffirm your passion and reaffirm your talent and your gift. Um, so just just stay on that path, follow follow that thing that was was put inside of you to do this, and and. Uh, and chase it with everything you got. You know, be be very grateful that you have the opportunity to do that. Well, amen. Lessons from HBCU. Love some Prairie View. All right, Houston, Texas in the house. Marcel, thank yeah. you so much for joining us on Black News Tonight. Congratulations on the success of Neighborhood. And also, we want to make sure everybody knows to watch at Monday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. Keep up the great work.